It's my favorite word of the week or the mm -hmm. year. Yeah. The month is traction. Yeah, yes, traction. Yes, okay. Yeah. So you want to think before you even play the opening arpeggio, which is the root, the third, the fifth, and the root. You're mm -hmm. thinking, how am I going to approach that? Am I going to play the first note soft, then the next note soft, or am I going to get deeper in the keys as I go through that arpeggio? I would say make a little crescendo. Mm -hmm. So you want and go slower. And think you're in the quicksand here, so that you really hear the thickness of this. So, now you're falling down, so it's going to be less, and this is a tonic. But, remember the agogic note, mm -hmm. destination. So I would like to hear that. Okay. I would like just to hear that. Is that that agogic note has to stay its full value because it's tending to get stopped and then you get a little empty space. I'll show you where it happens. So uh -huh. here, you're falling down. Watch Stay. Remember, this finishes. You're done okay. now. Yep, 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 yep. To do the agogic note, you have to do a little like, delay. It's very tricky. Watch. them in, into them too fast or else the listener doesn't appreciate the fullness of the um, of the swell of it on a violin we could draw a slower bow but on the piano we go in a little mm -hmm. slower into the note okay. yeah, remember to start less Measures were exquisitely played. Okay. Now here, don't let this run away from you. Because mm -hmm. remember, we're in way back tempo. If we're in back tempo, then. is measure three and four. Three and four. Oh, yeah, okay. that's, that's an important spot there. That, that went in too fast to that G. Oh. Um, I go from a little, you come, you come a little, little below and then forward, okay. a little below. Okay. And I get that. And look, I'm testing for that hanging five, so mm -hmm. I'm get not tight. Mm -hmm. Okay. Now those went too fast, your sixteenth. That this is your beat. those notes out because they, they have a tendency to want to crowd because you see a lot of 16 so you start yeah. crowding them too yeah. much. Yeah. Yeah. Think of a violin that has plenty of time in the bow to keep those 16s spaced. Mm -hmm. We have to do it like on the piano. We have to think we have a bow in our right hand right now. 
Fingering helps phrasing, and if you pick the wrong fingering, it hurts the phrasing more often than okay. not. Okay, yeah. I, I can see that. Yeah. All right. So it's a good fingering. Just. Yeah. The, the point is that that's, that's sort of the, the destination of the phrase, right? It's a, a dominant seven. It's all the semi cadence because we're up in the air, right? The left hand's doing a dominant seven in B minor. See that? The left hand's doing a yeah. dominant seven. Right, right. If you, if you play all the notes under that E, you get an F sharp seven chord, which is the dominant seven in B minor. Okay. So we're up in the air. That's, that's called the semi cadence. Mm -hmm. Okay. A dominant or a dominant mm -hmm. seven. We're up in the air. We haven't finished the phrase. It's he he loves those, doesn't he? Oh, yeah. Well, most composers do it. It's, a, it's kind of a cliche form where you have a semi cadence. Then you have a final, but the final cadence, he doesn't bring us back to B minor at the end of this. Where does he end up? D major. He is a D yes. major. Yes. Mm -hmm. Right. That's the beauty of it, because he says, well, I'm not going to do what you think I'm going to do. And then he starts stretching the whole thing out of the bowl, but you see what he does. Now, what's your left hand doing? Oh. And you want to really phrase that nicely, too. And I would do them legato. Yeah, and look how you start. A little thing. Look how you do it. Okay. Again, it's the coming under, coming under, and then okay. the slower, slightly wrist forward. suspensions very well but on your left hand you followed them nicely mm -hmm. down and very good but don't forget don't forget wait wait a minute, wait a minute. Look, look what happens you hear that okay you have cold notes because okay. otherwise you're not going to get the suspensions Legato. Watch, watch, watch. Okay. Okay. So let's do it right here. Together now. All together. And stay slow though. Don't go faster. Like. On this piano, I have to use a soft pedal on this. This comes out too loud there. Don't you do it though, that piano is more regulated. Yeah. Underneath, right? right? That has to survive mm -hmm. through all that other. And remember, you're playing slow, so it's probably not going to survive because we're playing long, longer notes by playing slower. Mm -hmm. But you do your best you can. And the other thing is make the right hand more of the soloist, the, the, the star, mm -hmm. in the beginning. It really, we really want to like identify what is this piece about. It is, the subject is upstairs, and this beautiful arpeggio. So, and there's very much a cushion of harmony under it, right? It's harmony underneath in the beginning. This is harmonic. When 
you start like a trill, it's a trill. Uh, it's four note, we call it a trill. Um, the only way you can really have it like relaxed is if the note before it, your hand doesn't get stiff. Like mm -hmm. the note you play before you start the trill, yeah. if you're yeah. tight, yeah. then the trill is like a mess. Okay. okay. So you have to like let your arm hang off that B. You're still holding it, but it's like your arm is hanging off the two. Okay. Instead of I'm squeezing the two and now I'm squeezed into the trill and I, I don't Okay. I don't relax into the trill because I'm tight from the previous note. Uh -huh. Make sure you have a good beginning. like you're slurring a bow in fours and they have to be very wavy. If you mm -hmm. make the, all those sixteenths wavy, otherwise they get very tacky sounding. Mm -hmm. You know? Okay. So if you sang it, you know, think in fours. It's hard. This is very, it takes a lot of control. Yeah. But you can't let those race away. Those, those are beautiful melody sixteenths, melodic sixteenth notes with the suspensions under them. Couldn't be more beautiful. Suspensions underneath. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Okay. Can you go back to right here? what you practice when you started you did your melodic line yeah. you don't want the melodic line to jump into the uh, alto gotcha. okay. that's the beauty of playing Bach is delineating your voices so my melody was yeah that's why the stems are going in all these different directions mm -hmm. to, the, to say well now we have how many three voices there so one is on top of soprano and then we have alto or you could call it a tenor it's in the tenor range and then we have the bass. Mm -hmm. So yeah, so just make sure you keep hearing what you started with today, which was... Gotcha. Okay. So you're doing 
doing much better now. Okay. Now, and then you do in the next section, you know that you're picking up. Mm -hmm. and now you're going D major. Da, da, da. It's set on the alt B, right? But now it's going to be another Um, at, almost as important as what's upstairs, because that little those threads of sixteenths that he had up in the first half are now in the left hand. Mm -hmm. But it's, they're not the same thing. Mm -hmm. But they're still meandering around with little scale-like directions that the other one was too. Is that the F sharp? That we're in F sharp minor, minor by F sharp minor. I would uh -huh. say that. I would say that. Lot? Yes, he uses a combination of the harmonic and then he descends with raised notes mm. sometimes. Mm -hmm. Which is unusual because we don't usually descend in a minor with the raised notes in a melodic. We only do mm -hmm. it going up. Mm -hmm. He likes to do it coming down. You're absolutely right. He does it here. Now, how do you relate F sharp minor to B minor at the beginning? It's it's called the dominant minor. It's, hmm. You don't usually see dominant minors. Hmm. But you could say it's more related to the D major that he went he in. Uh, hit, he hit us with a lot. He exposed us to, and then he goes up a third, which hmm. is beautiful. Hmm. That's what he's really doing. Hmm. Hmm. I would think of it that way. Hmm. That would be the three chord okay. of the D major okay. that, he, that he exposed us to for so long in the second half. Okay. Right, and then he, so really, if you map it out, you're really going here. And you're getting eventually to D major. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And then you're going to. Mm. And ultimately, you're going to find your way through this by going to the, look at this. The middle note became F sharp major, which brings us to B minor. Mm. So the, the, the dominant minor became the dominant primary dominant of B minor, which is F sharp major. Huh. See? So it's huh. going to get us back. It's going to put that A sharp in there. So you're going to get this chord, and it'll get us back to what he started with. Huh. Yeah, and you'll notice that. You'll see when he does that. Okay. That's why you're seeing a lot of A sharps. Mm -hmm. right? See? He puts those A sharps. Mm -hmm. See? Then it's, then it's back to the beginning. That gives us the sense of that's the leading tone, of course, B minor. And if you put the leading tone, the seventh note, and you make a chord under it, you get the primary dominant. It's not that complicated in terms of the harmonies. If you know the big spectrum of where he is from any measures, and now, okay, now I know he's in the F sharp minor, mm -hmm. and I have to know the, the form, yes, so your fingers fall into those you know, modalities. Um, that's very important. Okay. Yeah. The big thing, the beautiful thing about this is that beginning, because it's going to come back in lots of ways. And then he's going to go. And then it's going to, at the end, back to what's in the bass. Based Great. on the arpeggio, the going up and the going mm -hmm. down.